Yo, 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 yo. Uh, hey, you. Uh, oh, there you, there, there. Uh, oh, there you are. Uh, All right, so so now we got to make sure that both of our noises hit the same level. Check, 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 check. Yeah, but what if I was to check? See, I'm a little bit louder. Okay, well then I'll get. uh, No, 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 no. But but now now I can adjust it. I I can. Whether whether you want to be loud or not, I can adjust it. That's right. Okay. Can I make a coffee first? Oh yeah, (laughs) go for it. Excellent timing. (laughs) All right. Yo, 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 yo. in their gang is making coffee sometimes sometimes grown-ups want coffee we're not here to judge them I agree try clapping try snapping try throwing weird emojis on Justin is out. I think I can tweak this shot ever so slightly. Let's see. Let's see if I can get away with it. I don't want to panic. I want to crop it. Crop. Oh, yeah. No, I think we got it. Oh, that's a nice crop. That's a nice crop. Yeah, they're called goose suits. It's an old circus term. Oh, oh, oh dear, someone used the F word. Oh dear, oh dear, what? Oh, oh, oh damn. Wish I hadn't done that, Sam. Everybody get ready for the weird things as soon as that coffee pot dings. Because a coffee pot's like a toaster. Everybody knows that. Yep. 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 Oh, oh golly. Oh, jeepers. Oh, my. You know what? I just realized there's another one I can fix here. Don't worry about me. I'm just setting up everything. Oh. Oh. Oh, wait, maybe not. Man. There's a lot of older setups that I have to go through here. <laughs> ah, I see what's going on. Oh, there it is. Okay. Now I'm going to double click on this. Then I'm going to switch this other thing. To a place you never thought it would be before. 
That's just because you didn't know. That's the floor. Oof. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I have time to do it in time. Do what? I don't know, move, move all these things around. Move them all, baby. Three card money. Find the lady. <laughs> I was thinking about pork just now. Wait, wait, work? Pork. Pork. So remember when pork advertised itself as the other white meat? Oh, yeah, yeah, Right? And that's yeah. them trying to say, like, oh, chicken. Chicken is thought of as, like, a little bit more... Uh, healthy, healthy because it's a white meat. Red meat, right? And so yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. pork. It's another white meat. Yeah. But that's trying to go in a direction that I don't think pork should go. Safety. Because pork is in a pre-refrigeration era, medically hazardous. It is currently banned by multiple religions. So I think it should go to the world of danger. That like pork, the bad boy of meats. And it's just a bunch pork. of Live dangerously Yeah, pork It's It's like, What are you, chicken? Yeah, pork, <laughs> your last meal Yeah uh, uh, You never know where the night's gonna end up When you're eating pork Pork, pork. No longer for dorks Alright Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this And then we'll start the show um, sounds like audio is just about okay. Um, I am What's gonna say, Aussie, Aussie Rob, What's it's that? 6 a.m. out there in Australia, 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 Australia. Okay, so uh, here I'll I'll start with the other thing, and then I we'll. I feel come like this in. is good because I'm I'm only centered when I'm leaning into the mic. <laughs> Well, I, 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 I can adjust that. No, I like it. Yeah. I'm only centered when I'm leaning into the mic. I'm only happy when it rains. <laughs> I'm only happy when it's complicated. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. I'm going to hit. I'm going to see if I can get away with this. Uh, I'm going to hit record now. All right. You ready? In three, two. Whoops. Let me. Confirm these settings. Okay. And then we are confirming. Ladies and gentlemen, we are. Ladies confirming. and gentlemen, we need a go no go for launch of weird things. Uh, if you look at uh, engineering, are we a go no go? Go. Uh, storytelling, are we a go no go? Okay. All right. You're here. Okay. Instagram, we're going okay. By right now. We, we go. If. If I'm gonna not have to touch this, then, then we have to time everything right. All right. Okay. All right. It is the Weird Things Podcast. As always, I am your host, Brian Brushwood, joined, as I always have been, by mm -hmm. my inimitable co-host, Justin Robert Young. How yep. are you, Justin? It's weird things. It's definitely not great night. It's mm. not world's greatest con. It's not all the other shows that we do together. This is a new show that we do together. Yeah. Well, I, well we, not a new show. We've done this show for over 15 yeah, years, but I guess. We're going to do what we always do. We always do it. Which is, which is always keep to the serious science and the serious mm -hmm. topics. We're not going to speculate wildly about, no about what might be. Nonsense. No, no nonsense. nonsense. That's always been our slogan on all the weird, weird things. Weird things, we got no nonsense. So uh, if you're here for nonsense. Uh, we 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 straight up run out. Hit the hit the bricks. Uh, okay, so first up in our no nonsense strategy. Have you, you ever run point guard on any show that you've done? What do you mean? Been this role, the role you're doing now? Not since BB Live Show. And even then, BB Live Show was was <laughs> just chaos. Uh Let's talk about humans okay. talking to uh, humpback whales. You hear about this conversation? Do you, you hear about these DMs that uh, humans slide it into? Wait a minute. Whales don't speak English. Uh, well, according to this video, uh, I dare uh, so you to defy me. Yeah, let me, let me hear Played it. A recorded humpback signal. And 10 seconds later, Twain answered. 
The conversation from 2021 lasted a remarkable 20 minutes. As the whales circled the boat, a new paper suggests it's the first such communicative exchange between humans and humpback whales in the humpback language. It's a window into possibility. Okay, so basically they, they do a spam call. It's like they're like, hello, hello, humpback. <laughs> and, then the, and then the humpback is like, yes. And it's like, hello, humpback. <laughs> they, they had a quote unquote conversation. Uh, the new news was. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Can yep. I comment on this before we go any yeah, further yeah, into yeah, the yeah. news? Please, please do. I do this with my birds what? every day. What do you mean? Dr. Bird will, in a tonal, like, whistle, go, and then we go, me and my wife go, hi, doctor. And then he goes, and then we go, hi, doctor. We go back and forth, wherein we make a similar sound, he makes a similar sound. This is not, at least to this point, enlisted as the first conversation between human and birds and if this counts then what i do every single day counts with my bird okay so real thing that happens is every single morning when i get up about 50 percent of the time i'm up early enough that my weimar honor joy is able to i'm up early enough that i could take her out and run her around on the property she mm -hmm. likes it very very much uh bonnie was confused because joy uh, as they, you know, Weimar honors tend to be pretty smart. Uh, it, it, Bonnie was confused because Joy would look at me and begin to cough like, like, <coughs> and, uh, and she's like, I think there's something wrong with her throat. I think we need to go to the doctor. And I'm like, you do realize that's the exact sound she makes when I have her on a leash and she pulls too hard and she chokes herself. Like, I think she's straight up saying, Let's do the thing where you where, choke me. Where, where I go, ah, ah, yeah. ah, ah, ah. right? So uh, uh, in this case, uh, the footage that we just listened to is from 2021, but but new research documents seem to indicate, and, and there's a, a version of SETI that's like just trying to talk to intelligent creatures here on Earth, which, to be honest, I, I, I can't fault. I think that's a, not a bad idea, all things being equal. To try to communicate more and more with people that are, that are that with all of God's creatures. Well, or or at least to understand, kind of the handshaking process between vastly different types of brains. Yeah, if that's what we're doing here, right? Like we have no idea what that sound means to the whale, and and what the whale is trying to communicate by repeating that sound back to the boat. Like it, we are soliciting a theoretically mirrored response, I, and and that is cool. It is certainly cool with a whale because you know you don't have a whole lot of interactions with whales. They sort of go and do what they please. So if they are around a boat or around humans, it is cool to see them doing whatever, up to and including literally just attacking the boat. Well, that's terrifying. Like, <laughs> but but also that's the thing that they're doing now is sure. attacking boats. I mean, I, I guess I don't know the scientific significance, and and uh, uh, I will go so far as uh, in my role as the the commentariat to say that uh, it is a useless significance of just getting a whale to repeat a thing back. Well, uh, and it sounds like it was not exactly repeating the thing back it sounds like it was saying a response to it so it's like it's equivalent to um uh, ring ring hello and it's like uh hi may i speak to brian yes this is brian or whatever it's like it's uh to be honest what it made me think of is uh the work that uh our friend andrew bain uh is doing with large language models like if mm -hmm. we record enough conversations between uh various uh, whales might we be able to essentially create a, a whale ai is is the question i wanted to play with maybe uh, i mean i i guess the the biggest connection point would be trying to understand what the whale mind thinks right i, I guess like in my mind i don't know what the difference between doing this kind of idea with a whale or with dogs like like you know 
Well, yeah, it, and uh, that's a legitimate debate. So, um, uh, different mammalian brains, as I understand it, this is something that they covered in my pseudoscience class 25 years ago. Uh, different mammalian brains have different structures. Uh, humans, we have our language area is a little little place called Broca's area. And in, Shout out. Uh, in other animals, uh, they, they simply have not developed one of those. And so as a result, in the 1960s, there was an attempt to teach sign language to a chimpanzee that was playfully named Nim Chimpsky uh, after Noam Chomsky for his work with uh, 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 this is before he became, you know, known for political stuff. Yeah, correct. Um, but uh, but the counter uh, argument was, uh, yeah, either they have the developed area of the brain that would allow them to process language or they don't. Yeah. If they don't, then uh, essentially what you're doing, and this is probably an unfair straw man argument, it's the equivalent of going to an island with a bunch of flightless birds and then standing in front of them and just flapping your arms, and then suddenly they're all like, oh, so that's how you do it. Uh, and then they all start flying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So, so what is unknown is whether or not there's a linguistics part of a whale brain and whether or not this is just habit and routine, you know, like uh, uh, just reflexive, or if there is some kind of substantive con conversation. Yeah, my bet's no. <laughs> um, Although, I don't know. There is, like, a lot of conversation about, like, whales making sounds to each other, right? Well, and and passing along messages in the form of songs get created and they get they get much like humans play telephone like like that's how a whale song can be heard in you know, off the coast of antarctica yeah and then you know months later they're hearing other whales uh, in the in their social network uh repeating the same memes essentially now whether or not there's context to be understood that means anything or they're just like, like correct oh they're good they're good mimics like like they like mimicking each other that that is a social behavior right but uh, they, uh, but, it, but it doesn't really mean it, it's not like it's like 10 percent off at walmart like like they, that's that's like the point of the whale song it could just be like and somebody listens to that and goes like, that's, that's a jam <laughs> Well, and likewise, uh, you know, we we made games with with our pups of trying to induce uh, induce howling for them, and you know, every dog is different. But we figured out that uh, with Pippi, our, our Australian Shepherd, the trick is um, a a chord, a, a, an actual chord on the piano, another chord, mm. and then she's kind of into it, and then another chord, and then screw up a chord at which point you know that discordant rang causes her to just involuntarily go yeah so it could be something like that uh but as far as i mean i could think of worse ways if what you wanted to do is study different modalities of conversation for extraterrestrial creatures it's like well we got we got some proxies here. Yeah. You know, might as well start there. Yeah. Or uh, you could just jerk off a dolphin. Brian, we're not doing silly stuff. Uh, I, oh, no, no, no. I'm actually quoting from the 1960s uh, 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 study. Never mind. <laughs> uh, you know what you're doing. I, I'm just, I'm you just saying. You don't. You're smiling. I'm just You know what you're doing. Okay. All right. But well. while we're here. I think maybe the people involved in this research uh, might want to go do a little stand-up comedy, at which point I think it might sound a little something like this. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> White whales be like... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because it's... <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's 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 about as far as a field as we can go. We're pulling it back. Too silly. <laughs> Too silly. Too silly. Too silly. Um, uh, can we do a uh, 
an AI minute corner hour. AI minute corner hour as a large language model. We cannot process your request. Uh, so I think, I think something that we should do is keep on sharing, uh, uh, surprises to ourselves as we continue to try to use AI for different things. Yes. Uh, y- you had mentioned that you use uh, chat GPT to write, uh, the tedious podcast notes for stuff. We were like, Hey, this data set, that was our podcast. Please make now notes. It is even easier. Uh, uh, I, on, and after things a few weeks ago, I, uh, sang the, uh, uh, song, the glorious song of Riverside, which is another like stream yard and a few others. Um, uh, for, for the uninitiated who aren't doing podcasts, uh, Riverside is basically like, like kind of like zoom, but everybody records locally. Then you yes. get independent tracks and then it blends it them. It goes through a, yeah, through your Chrome browser, which allows local recording. So you never have to worry about somebody else recording the right way. Like you will know whether or not their recording is happening locally. And uh, you also get video. What they have added is not only the ability to make a transcript of the video that you just made, uh, but also show notes and will break out little clips. So, so it'll do show notes not with what the plan was, but with what the actual context of the actual yes. conversation was. Yes. Th- th- this is one of those things, Justin, because uh, for anybody who... Uh, hasn't hasn't heard, you know, I'm sort of going through this like two month boot camp of trying to understand, you know, we have seven different verticals that we do out of this property. Yeah. Uh, uh, four or five podcasts, two YouTube channels and so on. Uh, and uh, I, I'm trying to understand everything to figure out like what the better solution would be. But the better solution just keeps getting better by the week. And so yeah. it's hard for me to want to implement any one solution to to fix everything because everything just keeps getting better so fast. Yeah, I, I, I do think that part of the uh, moment that we're at right now, though, is that those solutions are so cheap that you might as well uh, uh, just do stuff. I think like we're probably at a point now beyond AI where, uh, you know, during the uh, holiday season, it might be worth it to, to go check out. Like, we, we figured out uh, our friend Darren Kitchen was building a studio. So he bought a bunch of new stuff. Uh, and then he gave me old stuff that he was uh, playing around with that essentially like takes away the necessity for like two of your three computers that you are currently using to broadcast and right. do they like those, those computers are there essentially to provide the horsepower for video capture cards. Right. Like and, they and, also and- do other stuff. They can do a lot more, uh, you can play higher end video games on it, but the reason why you had to get the computer the way that you did was just for the capture cards and those things. Now there's just a brick that you can just plug everything in. You don't have to worry about the capture cards. They're their own pain in the ass all in the past. Right. And, well, and, and similarly, and- software does that as well in a lot of times either extraordinarily cheap. Like I think like my Riverside plan is like $15 a month or something like that uh, or free. In, in, in a lot of ways. Well, and on top of that, there are solutions that we have engaged with in order to eliminate echo, to eliminate uh, 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 ducking, uh, uh, other things to uh, eliminate, um, uh, I don't know, just workflow. Like, like I, think, I think of all seven things I'm doing, they all have independent distribution methods. And uh, it, it's, it's, that's that's what I'm trying to work on. On uh, welcome to Brian's workflow corner hour. Uh, it's uh, there's there's a lot to figure out, and I think that it, a lot's going to change in the next two weeks. Well, sure, and, and and just to focus on the AI stuff, that has been a material like the the AI solutions of Riverside alone, which is what 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 they're doing is when they process the video. They are running the video through, I don't know if it's a a whisper or, or, you know, uh, another service that does transcriptions, but they are immediate, they're auto doing transcriptions. That is something that I think is just going to be standard on almost every platform that does anything like this going forward. It would not shock me if 
you know, you know, with YouTube, there is a thing that you have at the at, at, as you're publishing that's like, would you like to upload like a, a simple text file that would do uh, subtitles? I would make a guess that that's probably going to go the way of the floppy disk over the next maybe even two years. Like, I think it's going to be very, very quick. That that option will still be there, is my guess, but it'll be buried under advanced settings for people who absolutely want to fine-tune stuff. But everything else, I think, is just going to be auto-generated because a lot of that stuff is really, really cheap. And then what Riverside is doing is then taking that transcript and saying to the AI, pick out the five most interesting one-minute-long clips from the transcript right and then using those context clues of exciting words or people going back and forth or even like looking at the reactions that people have not even looking i i i I believe that they are doing it's all it's all text what and they are spitting it back to the video editor and saying okay now that we know the transcript that these words happen at this time boop Cut out that thing, and it'll also give you a little uh, uh, name of what each clip is, so you know it. So, for example, we're not wrong. Uh, I found out also that Riverside only allows two-hour-long videos, which was a, a reason why I didn't get the social clips up for We're Not Wrong until now. But today, it cut out, like, nine of them. It was just nine little minute clips, and most of them were like really good. You can you can fine tune them a little bit, you know, to to make them exactly how you want it. But that's stuff that I didn't have time for. Yeah, like I, I I'm, it, it, I'm, so it, I'm a it's, one man it's not man. a case where it's like somebody would have had that job. It's like it just wouldn't have gotten done. But now it gets done. If the like the ice cream man, uh, uh, social media clip guy came was was driving through my neighborhood and saying for a very reasonable price in fact you name it uh uh uh, uh, i'll do exactly this then i would have done it but there's no way i would have looked for it i wouldn't have known what to look for and i wouldn't know how to motivate that employee i i i I just simply there it needed to happen automatically in the way that i needed spell check like in in the way that that there is just a lot of creature comforts that we have built uh, careers on via the internet, like Google Docs or Sheets or anything like that, that it's just, I would not have thought to do it. Uh, I just would have focused on my energy on other stuff that I can do better at. But now, transcript, show notes, the the uh, the fact that I can just list for people, like uh, just the whole, almost minute by minute, the topics that we're talking about, boom. Right there, people can find it. Well, it's uh, it's frictionless, is what you're seem seeming to tickle around. It's like now it's frictionless because all you want to do is have a message that gets heard by the world, right? And and now uh, there's you know uh, an unimaginable amount of tedium between you and there, uh, and now all of a sudden there's a a, a, a very friendly helper who's like. I don't mind doing all of it. <laughs> That's the thing that, you know, in talking to a lot of people about AI, the, the the stuff that is the most resonant to me as a creator is not to think of it as a thing that is replacing anything. It's not. Right. And and maybe it replaces certain elements of things in the future, but it ain't now, and I, I don't know when that's going to be. I'm going to live in the now for now, and if I'm living in the now... What AI is are a lot of not too bright but very fast interns. Right. Well, yeah. uh, and, uh, as as I'm fond of pitching, it's like uh, most people ain't never had a writer's room before. Here's how it feels to be the smartest person in a writer's room. You walk in and you say, give me a bunch of ideas. And you're like, dumb, 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 dumb. That one's not bad. Okay, maybe something there. Dumb, dumb. Actually, that one's quite good. Uh, and, and most yeah. people are not accustomed to that uh, or or don't have the types of jobs to do that. No, I, 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 I totally agree with you. I, I, I think that you just have to. It, it ultimately gets to the point where, like, if you're creating something 
you just need to know and think more about what you want to do and and less about how you execute it beyond the things that are most important right so for me to do a good podcast on politics i need to read a lot about politics i need to have a natural interest in it i need to have good takes that's the hardest thing is a take that is not been said a billion times that is interesting that you can put good words to i gotta measure my voice so i am interesting and exciting to people as they are listening to me none of that is social media <laughs> none of that is show notes none of that is any of the things that that a, a place with a staff kind of can do the more that that can be done outside of trusting another human to do it and which is tedium like boy that's awesome yeah yeah so so like just just redo everything now or wait one more month when it'll be even easier <laughs> well give me an example of a thing that you were looking at that you're seeing a solution for that uh you're like i don't know if i want to do this well, like like two months ago i was I was theorizing about the possibility of taking all of my content, having it translated into all other languages and being able to manipulate the lips so that it looked good enough that it would pass muster. Uh, in that just two months, not only is that now a product that is available off the shelf, but on top of that, uh, it will also pick out the best one minute clips and, uh, and write them and, you know, so they could be posted or whatever. However, on the flip side, uh, I am convinced that nobody is ever happier when they eventually figure out that uh, the thing they watched was made entirely by a robot. They want there to be a human on the other side of it, even if that human is just sort of waving his hands and directing something. That's interesting because I, I, I would wonder, to me, the technical excitement of making the lips move appropriately, uh, which, by the way, was was one of the uh, dreams of George Lucas. That uh, he's like, I, I can just, I can just not have the actors like say, even say like I can think of a new line in post, and then I could just change it, <laughs> like Queen Amidala, instead of saying I, I, Annie, you need to come to Tatooine. Like right. I, I could say, yeah, I said, like maybe if I could go back in the past, and maybe Han Solo would be all like, you seem upset, Greedo. Would you like a hug? <laughs> uh, so now, I mean, I think that is exciting, but for the same reasons why that kind of became a joke about George Lucas being too obsessed with tech and not obsessed with humanity, uh, or at least the human connection to his art, I would wonder whether or not moving the lips is like pretending that that this is actually in native Portuguese is a bridge too far because that would scream digital manipulation. If, if, if an old clip of scam school that was very obviously shot in San Francisco and nobody in Iceland has seen a bar that looks exactly like that. And yet you are speaking in perfect Icelandic and your lips are moving the right way. That might be discordant in a way that just making sure that accurate uh, subtitles that feels like a human's solution. Although maybe that changes going down the road and we're like, no, we actually want full on dubs that look like, like I, I, I want uh, 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 the, the funniest Spanish show ever to be in perfect English. And I want the lips to move exactly like they were speaking English. It, the closest thing I could think of now is like when it comes to large science fiction novels, like let's say the three body problem, uh, like it's not just a matter of reading somebody else's words. It's like you care who the translator was. And I guess that's true for ancient Greek. It's like, oh, no, no, no. You got to read the, the, the uh, uh, T.S. Lawrence or T.S. Eliot. Or I don't know which one. Uh, a version of the Iliad or the Odyssey or what have you. Yeah. T.S. Lawrence? I don't know, man. Uh, what if I look like some kind of ancient Greek? <laughs> some kind of prophecy or something? I'll tell you the one prophecy I care about. Patreon.com slash weird things, my friend. Yeah. 
And so it is Christmas. <laughs> so go to your computer, go to patreon.com slash weird things and give us your credit card. If you do that, you'll be happy. Happy. If you don't, you'll be in despair. Despair. You'll get after things early. Early. And you'll have grow a, more hair. And you'll get more hair. <laughs> and so this is things. Christmas. Uh, yeah. Th- uh, thank you to all of our patrons. Thank you. Uh, it's because of you that we. Talk about whales answering spam phone calls. I I resent this in the chat. Subscribe to Sober Great Night uh, by going to patreon.com slash weird thing. It ain't untrue. <laughs> well, and also like Sober Great Night is, is just the Bones podcast on <laughs> the Thursday morning. <laughs> we're, we're, I, I don't know. Yeah, doesn't stay sober for long. <laughs> doesn't stay sober. Hey, yo, hey, hey. Uh, uh, do we have another story you want to keep talking uh, about AI? Uh, we could keep on talking about AI unless somebody else has... Uh, Something else. Um, th- those were the the two that I had prepped. Yeah. What? Oh, uh, we 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 could brag on uh, uh, Andrew Main. Oh yeah. Quoted. Everybody go to read the following story. Discover Magazine. You ever heard of this Discover Magazine? Mm, go on. Uh, Stephen Orns. The year of the AI conversation. Just go ahead and take a look. One, two, three, four paragraphs in. Quote, we really underestimated the impact it would have, says Andrew Main, who helped test chat GPT and develop applications at OpenAI. For comparison, that user milestone and uh, uh, talking about how fast OpenAI like crushed the new user milestone. And then, I don't know, it always annoys me. When like, they, they what they throw right under there is is like, oh well, Threads, Threads got to a hundred million users in five days. It's like, no, how, Threads how, didn't. How are they doing today? Well, well, beyond that, Threads didn't. Instagram did. Instagram said, "Would you like another part of Instagram?" And yeah. A lot of people said, "Yes, I'd like a new feature on Instagram." And that's what happened. They did not have to acquire new users. They did not have to uh, uh, have people go through the sign-up form. Like, that should be a different record. Uh, so what, what are some of the ways that uh, you surprise yourself with, with using... Um, uh, Daily think- uses. Yeah. Daily uses. I made a uh, specialized GPT that named itself Summarize Pro. Okay. That essentially just is the prefix that I was typing into chat gpt and then at one point you just got to make that just just automatically so now i just go to this window i throw in a gigantic story that i've just read and i ask him to summarize it in uh two paragraphs with uh bullet points factoid bullet points uh below it and so that will that is indispensable for doing prep on px3 on we're not wrong uh, I've used a lot of Dolly stuff, especially, you know, I just set up YouTube channels for PX3 and we're not wrong. And, uh, you know, stuff like that used to really freak me out, uh, uh, banner art, you know, background stuff, logos. It's just not a problem anymore. Like I, I, you know, for, for the banner art, when you're starting a YouTube channel, it's like, okay, well, what do I do? Just do a blank screen. Do I go into Photoshop and pretend that I use Photoshop? Do I hire a photographer and and look smart in this suit? But even then it's like, all right, well, I'm bumping back this web form, finishing this web form by however long I want to spend working on this problem. Uh, For both of them, I was just like, with, we're not wrong. uh, I was like, I put the logo in. I said, I need a YouTube background image at this exact specification that uh, utilizes geometric shapes is monochromatic. Boom. Like, it, it popped one out. I said, man, less like this, more like this. Do-do-do-do. Same thing, PX3. I took a picture of me, and I said, please create an image that is a, a background, a YouTube background image at these specifications that is about American politics. 
boop, 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 done. Like the, 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 the quickness that I'm able to get through things that used to bring me anxiety. That's the biggest thing for me is that it is an, 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 an eliminator of professional anxiety on a paralysis. On, oh my God. Yes. Like my just go. God. Like I've wanted to do a dog and pony show logo forever. For as long as I've had the production company, I've had the same idea for a circle uh, and then kind of like a, a logo where there's a dog looking one way and a pony looking the other way. But but it looks not silly. It looks a little professional, like you wouldn't mind wearing it on like a T-shirt or something like that. Uh, and then one day I was like, oh, I can just do that in Dali. And I just, meh, more like this. Make the, they always made the pony too cute. I'm like, no, make the pony mad. <laughs> make, make it an angry pony. Like, uh but yeah, that's like I what I don't think people are prepared for is that AI next year, AI is going to be in everything. And you're not going to know just why you're better at everything and why everything is more fun and easy. And it's going to be because of AI. And the stories that are that we're going to talk about are not going to be about AI in the same way that we don't talk about web, web storage. Right. Like, it's like, no one's like, oh my God, web storage got a lot cheaper. We just know, oh, YouTube lets me upload 4K. Right. You know, we, we don't, we don't, well, all these things, these baseline elements of it, what, what's exciting about AI is that AI is like this baseline behind the scenes thing, but it's also this incredible tool that you can play around with and make things yourself with. Uh, I genuinely believe in the same way that like when Instagram first took off and everybody was like in love with it and it was number one on the app store, blah, blah, blah. Nobody was like, the internet wins again. <laughs> it was just, wow, cool, Instagram. There's this site. It's all about pictures because mobile pictures are an exciting thing. Takes your, takes your pictures and make them look crappier uh, like they were taken 20 years ago. Sure, but that's cool. Yeah. Right. And and now it's 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 its own way of communicating. It is it has changed social interaction, especially for a certain demographic. That's I think where we're going to get really fast with AI. Like well, I, 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 where I'm feeling it right now is I I don't so much feel. Uh, uh, there are some people who have never messed with OpenAI or Bing or or one of the advanced chat bots or whatever. And and it is fun to do the party tricks and to watch their minds kind of click. You've got a routine at this point. I do, I do, I do, I do. What is your routine? Uh, okay, my, spill your spill your beans. Okay, all right. My my routine is uh, I I'd say uh, uh, hey. I'm here in a Japanese bar. I'm in Tokyo, Japan. It's me and Justin, and I just want an American-style lager. Can you just talk Japanese and and have uh, uh, place my order for me? Also, you know who I am, so just kind of explain who I am. And 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 so I hear it's a bunch talking of, Japanese, but but I hear things like a Brian Brushwood, uh, American magician, you know, and then uh, American-style lager, you know, Justin Robert Young, and yeah. uh, 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 and I'm like, and then I'm like, whoa! Just now, somebody came in. It's a Norwegian dude. He's like really tall, and he said something in Norwegian. I don't speak Norwegian, but it sounded like Unchil, jeg forstår ikke, kunne du and uh, it suddenly immediately he says oh it sounds like he says he doesn't understand could you say that again and i was like thanks and then the third phase is oh my god the bartender just overheard this and now he wants to take me out in the back for a karaoke secret bar and so we go back there and then it's like uh, oh my god write a movie scene about this whole thing yeah. that happened and so i was like make it like a summer blockbuster and then it does it and i was like uh, end it with a rap, and then uh, it always, always, ends with rap. always, end it with, always with a rap. ends with a rap. Yeah, and then, uh, uh, and then after that, it's like, uh, 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 I don't Bri know. Brian, Brian is delighted by Chat GPT rapping like the mom in Arrested Development was delighted by Gene Parmesan. Yes, like you yeah. just. <laughs> <you're> like, <laughs> as soon as Chat GPT starts busting verses, you're like. Ah! <laughs> that all of that is true, but uh, uh, what I was wanting to bring up is uh, 
uh, the novelty of chat, B Ch chat GPT and, and I, I assume Bard, I haven't used it very much, being good is waning. And instead, what I'm feeling more is like, why are you so stupid, Siri? Why are you so stupid, Alexa? You know yeah. what I want. Yeah. You know, Alexa is like, you know, hey, play that song. And it's now like playing the Beatles. Yeah, exactly. It's like, would you like to buy some toilet paper? I'm like, no, I'd like you to pay that, play that song. It's like, well, uh, I don't have it, so I don't know how to do it. It's like, you know, I have Spotify. You go to Spotify, you find that song and you play it. And it's like, oh, did you mean the live version? I was like, mm -hmm, you're messing with me. You're yeah. messing with me. It is weird what our expectations are for stuff like that, that uh, I've certainly had the same frustration because you, you look at Siri and Alexa now and they feel like command line DOS prompts that it's like, okay, congratulations to me. I, I might about as fast like it's a 50 50 shot whether or not I could do it faster on my phone. Right. Then say it. Because if I get it wrong once or it gets it wrong once, then, then it's I might like, as well have done it on my phone. Well, especially when you're like in a party situation and, and it's like you have the exact right clip to play or whatever. And, and you just want to like, DJ, hit it. And the DJ is like, I'm sorry. I don't understand. It was like, ah, you screwed it up, DJ. What are you doing? Siri does a thing in CarPlay where. I'll, I'll just have, I'll be, I'll, I'm usually listening to podcasts and then I'll have a thing for a song. I'll just want to like, it's like, oh, but play Dear Mama by Tupac. But because the way that CarPlay works or Siri works in CarPlay, it is asking me, or it automatically defaults to searching in the audio app that is playing audio now. So it will find... A podcast that involves the <laughs> the words "Dear Mama" and "Tupac," uh, and they're always random, like crazy nonsense. And then you have to say, "No, on Apple Music, right. play Dear Mama" by Tupac, uh, and then it's smart. But it, there's no in between. There's no like that seems like a weird thing to ask for a podcast. Are you sure you don't mean "Dear Mama" the song by Tupac that's on a audio on a, on a music service like? That's what I feel I could do if the, the large language model stuff was attached to it. The question is whether or not 2024 brings that to us. I, I got to imagine. I somebody... have to think it will. Like, I, I think that the new game is going to be, uh, at this point, we've hit, uh, I don't even want to say in minimum viable product because it's truly extraordinary. But I think we're increasingly going to value just the speed of responses, you know, like, like right now there's a lot of good tricks that are used to cover up the fact that, that compute time is, is happening. Um, uh, but, uh, the clo whoever moves the fastest and we are like, Oh shit. Oh, so, sorry. I'm, I'm cursing. Well, oh, whatever. Oh shoot. Sounds like somebody wants to go back and hear the Humpty dance. I'm like, that's right. You know, and make it more conversational. I think that is going to develop a lot over the next, one year yeah i i i think that the, the 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 technical questions with a lot of that is is all based into the the computing you know there's a report that just came out as we were recording now what which is a review of google's gemini that's like hey google's gemini is good it's just really slow and that's their pro it's not their ultra so it's like Pro is probably around ChatGPT 3.5-ish. Their Ultra with the benchmarks that they released, they claim to that it's around GPT 4-ish. Um, we don't know. It's not out. You know, at this point, it's still their girlfriend from Canada. But like, I I wonder when you are creating these kinds of models, speed is huge, especially when you're dealing with language stuff like we are now when we're talking about and, and and if you want to make it conversational then the 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 timing tone and tenor of a conversation like that especially if you want it to feel more jarvisy that's really important there's a um are you finding yourself trusting uh chatty g more these days um i i like for factual stuff yeah, I, I, I 
I tend to, it has earned my trust in that the stuff that I'm asking it, I usually wind up double checking anyway. And it's been right enough of the times that like, I, I think the, the, the biggest hallucination bummers came pre Bing search, ubiquitous Bing search, because that's where like, <laughs> uh, and, and, and I'll ask, one I'm, time, I'm like, one time, I'm, and, like and, I'll and, ask like, Hey, are you hallucinating right now? And they'll say like, yeah, I am <laughs> sorry. I just been making this up. <laughs> uh, there was with season three of world's greatest con. We, uh, Andrew Main, our co-host on this show, grace, uh, uh, graciously sponsored the show, but sponsored that season. And so we did these ads. We had to do these live reads. And at the time, I thought that ChatGPT was using, it was like the very beginning of them using Bing. And so I thought by throwing in the URL to Andrew's book that we were doing the live read for, uh, just saying, hey, here's this book. Give me a 30 second radio synop, uh, a 30 second radio ad for this book. It did not search it. It did not know what happened in the book. It just knew from the way that Amazon does its URLs, the names of the, the you know, it was Girl in the Water, a Sloan McPherson novel. Uh, uh, it knew enough context that it just spit out this thing. That like had that, twists that, and that, turns that I that you had me read, yep. and then you processed, and we sent for approval. And the author Andrew Main was like, uh, "None of that happens in the book." <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like an interesting book, though. <laughs> um, but now it's it's if anything, I I agree with some of the um some of the uh, uh, criticism that, that chat GPT has been, I don't want to say nerfed because I think that that's probably an oversimplistic way to look at it, but uh, it requires clearer prompting now yeah. because it, it unfortunately it knows that it's the 800 pound gorilla or open AI knows they're the 800 pound gorilla. And so they do not want certain things to happen. They are taking uh, stuff seriously they're taking safety seriously and so uh you can still do a lot of cool stuff obviously there's always going to be edgelords that are going to want it to make napalm and stuff like that but uh you know you just need to be able to prompt a little bit better uh and and that's that's really my my current status on it is that uh you know i i've twice had lab work that I have just uploaded the PDF to chat GPT and I, and I've asked, Hey, explain this for me. Like I explain this in plain English, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and this last time it was, it was a little bit like, Hey, I'm not your doctor. Just so you know, I'm not your doctor. You should go see a doctor. And I'm like, I literally got this from my doctor. I I'm going to see my doctor again. I literally just want a plain English context. So when my, I talk to my doctor, I can have a better, more informed conversation. And ev eventually it got there. Uh, yeah, I have noticed that it really helps to begin with the called shot of like, uh, we're going to have a back and forth of this many rounds. Uh, eventually I'm going to want a recommendation for blank, but first, uh, do some How's research. <laughs> What's that? How's your day? <laughs> but first, uh, do some research and prove to me that you understand the fundamentals of blank. Yes. It's like, great. Okay, good. You do. Uh, what I want to do is explain blank in this kind of thing. What are some ways to do that? You know? Yeah. Um... But then you do have to go check work, like just like a middle school teacher. Well, I think for for important stuff, yeah, you know, I I think when it, are YouTube videos important? <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like if you're doing information for like a modern rogue video or something like that, then yes, you need to make sure that it's make sure that it's right. Uh, but also, if you get it wrong, then you can do another video. Uh, the we got it wrong video. Uh, yeah. Yep, I well, guess. No, you can just run the comment section because I'm sure they will. They'll be very quiet. I, I, I'm sure they're all going to be correct. Uh, hey, let's uh, let's talk picks. Pick, 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 a pick, a pick, 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 pick. You go first. Uh, 
I watched the Amanda Knox documentary mm. on a, on Netflix, and I only did so because she did like an hour, a two hour interview with Sam Harris on the Making Sense podcast, and um, uh, it, it uh, that's 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 a tale that to hear it today sounds very very simple, but at the time was not very simple at all but now it just quite simply is uh once you learn like i don't know maybe five facts nothing about her reactions seems mysterious anymore i have long said that america's superpower is its self-loathing complex america likes to point out america's flaws uh boy do we love it Sometimes you need to understand that we should take that stuff seriously and not literally. <laughs> and by that, I mean, go to other countries <laughs> and just kind of see how things work because there's some really cool things that, that we can absolutely learn, uh, learn and America's really, really good at assimilating various different ideas from around the world. Uh, but boy, it ain't... It ain't all uh, 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 super efficient everywhere. And, and Italy's justice system, at least in this case, did not do well by her. Uh, yeah. So if, if for those who were too young to know, uh, Amanda Knox was uh, accused of a, a, a bizarre sex cult assassination of her roommate after only three weeks of being uh, her roommate. Um, she's... A, a uh, attractive 20 year old American. Um, there was intrigue that involved, you know, her, her boyfriend uh, in Italy at the time. Uh, uh, things, things that didn't come out until much, much later. She had only been dating this guy for five whole days. It was the beginning of a 20 year old's fling yeah. on a trip to Italy. Here's another thing. She's she was trying to eat, pray, love. She was three weeks into being roommates. So if she didn't react a whole lot, it's probably because she's like, number one, did not have a strong emotional attachment to this new roommate of three whole weeks that she barely knew. Number two, tried to speak only in Italian and uh, turns out, like, literally, until she was arrested, didn't know that this woman had been m raped and murdered. Yeah, and, and, and for, for those of you who, who did not follow it, a lot of the reasons why she was looked at as guilty, not only by the investigators who very, you know, uh, uh, increasingly kept doubling down on the fact that they were not... Uh, they did not have the goods. They they uh, made a mistake and then kept trying to cover up that mistake with more mistakes. Uh, but also a lot of the evidence, quote unquote, was her lack of a reaction. Correct. Which like not her saying I did it, <laughs> not any physical evidence. Uh, in fact, the physical evidence, as you were describing to me in this documentary, was oh. insanely sloppy. Well, and uh, uh, that's another bit of the optics is because, like, uh, here in America, we're only getting everything third hand and so on. So uh, a news agency in, in Italy shows what looks to be forensic people in forensic suits doing forensic things. Um, and it's like, well, clearly, if they found DNA on the knife, that must be it. A uh, little detail that comes out in the documentary, uh, they never once changed gloves, and they just touched everything. So all DNA got everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> everything is, everything written, is it, compromised. It, 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 it is written in an American courtroom, thrown out immediately. Yep. All yeah. the evidence thrown out immediately. Uh, 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 on top of that, there's... Although, law weirdly, that probably would have been bad for Amanda Knox in that case, as, cause, as she did not murder anybody. It, successfully collected DNA evidence would have been a boon to her. Yeah. What well, would well, the, uh, uh, on top, you're right. Uh, on top of that, the, uh, 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 disparagement laws are different. So it's like, you know, she, she's barely speaking Italian and, and, and she's pressured into just, just, you know, Hey, you're the best witness. You have to say your boyfriend did it. And she's like, Oh, okie dokie here in America. That would be a civil suit of defamation, defamation, but it's a criminal issue. And I believe that all these years later, uh, she says that that for the third time they're reopening the case and she's going to be tried in absentia yet again for defamation for the uh, the pressured uh, 
claim that she made uh, in that moment. So wait, who is the defendant? Uh, the defendant would be the boyfriend of five days. Who, uh, who, who, who was eventually found to be the murderer. Bo- both, no, neither of them had anything to do with it. It was oh. a third guy, a miscreant, Got who it. had a, a criminal record before, okay. who did 16 years, was found guilty, and then the moment he got out, went out and started assaulting women again. Yeah. So it's like, eh, ain't much of a mystery here on gotcha. this one. When the moon hit his eye like a big pizza pie, that's a murder. Uh, yes. But uh, but uh, it, if, you, if you don't want to watch the documentary, at least listen to the interview on the Sam Harris podcast, uh, uh, Making Sense, because she talks about what it's like. Uh, like she feels awful for, you know, her five day boyfriend because he basically is living. He's O.J. Simpson over there in Italy. Just everyone assumes he... That he's the bad guy. That there's too much smoke. There had to be fire. Mm. And she got the hell out of Dodge. Uh, well, uh, responsibly so. <laughs> She's like, see you later, pasta munchers. Yeah. I'm out. Pasta munchers. <laughs> uh, what about you? What do you got? Uh, I don't watch a lot of reality television, but for whatever reason, my wife and I started watching... The uh, Squid Game Challenge. Oh my God! I I I am adverse to even giving it a try. But if you're telling me that this is a recommendation, by way of what was reported at the time, actual starvation and real injuries, <laughs> they seem to have made a pretty compelling uh, uh, show. I- I'm at a point. Like the first two or three episodes are really good. Like, like they are really well paced. They got genuinely interesting people to be in the middle of this, and they uh uh the 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 challenges are interesting. Exciting people get eliminated. Blah 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 blah. Uh, I'm at a point now, about halfway through, where things are like starting to hit a bit of a momentum wall Uh, i don't know how many episodes are in this show but it's a compelling reality format granted it it was a television show based around a reality game right uh so you know the show was good they follow the show you know pretty religiously uh you know you just mix in a little bit of that survivor meta gaming of people believing like okay well i gotta make alliances here and here and we gotta stick together and uh, but, uh, uh, this is totally an American production or no, this was shot in England. And so a lot of the most interesting people all either have Northern England accents or are from the American South. But I kind of feel like they prioritized different accents. In, in the casting of this. Oh, that's interesting because if you have the event, you really could get people from all over the world and you really could just have different editing teams just be told, this one's going to America, this one's going to England, this one's going to South Korea, uh, go for it. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I would assume that they probably want to replicate it and do stuff like that. But uh, uh, yeah, I don't know. The first few episodes I have found, I found compelling uh they they are good at ending on cliffhangers and uh you know like it's so interesting to see a show like that that is inextricably based on broadcast television pacing you know the reason why the bachelor or survivor like these very mega even today mega successful reality shows are what they are is because unlike television uh, that used to be based on like Knight Rider was going to be going over a cliff every 15 minutes because right. that's where the commercials were, right? Like like something interesting had to happen at a certain interval. Reality television is pretty much the only thing that rigidly sticks to that in 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 the same kind of way. Like even big broadcast dramas like, you know, uh, uh, I, don't, I don't know, ghosts or whatever the the shows that i only know because they advertise during football like i don't think that they have the same 80s style like someone's hair gets lit on fire every 15 minutes sort of pacing but reality television shows do 
you are always you can't end you can't go to a commercial with anything that's anything less than like what record scratch right broken glass sound uh, orchestra hits bump 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 exactly and this is a little bit of that that you do get the like do 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 but there's no commercials because it's netflix <laughs> do 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 take a breath Okay, let's keep going. What? Here I we go. A lot of, well, because like they do have a lot of fake outs, and that's part of the charm of the show because you do get the the meta story is these people are going crazy because they're in a sensory deprivation zone. Yeah, like they are just in this gigantic open dorm space. They are meeting each other for the first time. Some of them are really, really playing the game hard. Some of them are keeping stuff close to the vest. You keep cutting back to their entrance interviews where you get more about their backstory and how they're not here to make friends and blah, 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 blah. And that, you know, goes against, uh, you know, what, what they might be saying in the moment. But part of the charm is that it is raising your blood pressure sometimes for nothing. So you can also feel like them, like, oh, this is an unsettling environment. <laughs> this kind of sucks. You have no idea when you're going to get eliminated and and why you might get eliminated as the biggest change in the show compared to well i guess the biggest change between the show and the reality show is they don't kill lack of murders yeah Yeah. although especially at the beginning and i don't know whether or not they change this but in the first few episodes uh they're all mic'd having those like collar mics yeah right so they don't have anything pinned to them and they can just kind of go you know, free range. Uh, but they also had little squibs inside their shirts. So when they were in the red light, green light uh, thing, if they were moving, you would just, they had their white shirt and then it would just be like, and then it would just start bleeding. It was black. It wasn't red. So yeah. it, didn't, it didn't look too, too grotesque. Uh, but now a few episodes in, I think that they, they've done away with the, uh, the, 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 the murder sh- aspect. Yeah, th- people are just eliminated. Although they are good about like once you're eliminated, that's like you don't. They don't do exit interviews. They don't like you are kind right, of because gone, you're you're dead essentially. Yeah, they, they hold on to that. Gameplay wise, the biggest thing that they've changed is they have a lot of these basically mini challenges or tests of honesty. Uh, so one, they just wield a phone into the center of the room didn't explain anything the phone rings guy picks it up uh and uh, he's like like congratulations you've earned a prize and they brought burger and fries for this guy and he gets to hand it out to everybody they all start messing around again a couple hours later phone rings again same guy runs up picks it up and it's like You will be eliminated unless you, in two minutes, can get somebody else to pick up the phone and talk to the operator. You have two minutes. Ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah. He was a bad liar. He got eliminated. Spoiler alert for episode three. But, uh, yeah, so that's that's cool. I don't know. I think it's good. Uh, As far as psychological, I mean, again, I think it partly came together because they were legitimately... Uh, they were legitimately starving these people. Uh, but you know where that torture went when you see it on screen. Uh, well, I mean, that, that was certainly the case with like, uh, the biggest loser, uh, the stories that have come out of that production were pretty horrific, uh, about, well, yeah, that's, yeah, that's it. That was a weird, a weird one. Yeah. We have, we have friends that worked on that and I'll speak no more of it. Yeah. But yeah, it's look at the end of the day, you're going to have to lose a lot of weight <laughs> in, in a time, in a time period that it might not be super healthy for you, for you to lose that amount of weight that fast. Yep. Uh, all right. Well, uh, we'll be back next week with, uh, uh, Another Andrew Maine. Yeah. Hopefully, uh, 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 since it's just the two of us, I think we'll, we'll skip the, uh, after, after, after things mm-hmm. but uh but we'll see we'll see you guys next week until then uh, what's what's the catchphrase that we always say oh, take a take a shot take 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 a shot it's been weird <laughs> <laughs> oh
Oh, yeah. Tight. Tight. What was that? Uh, it was uh, like an hour or four. Nice. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> not bad for very little prep. Yeah. All right. Well, here uh, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna take us out. Love you, Diamond Club. Yeah. We'll see if I'm able to post this. Hooray!